on this episode of Drive Your Adventures, brought to you by Power Stop Brakes. We load up the Ram truck and take part in the very first four-wheeler magazine Overland Adventure. <laughs> we will head deep into the Arizona backcountry for an epic drive with a diverse group of people and vehicles. Morning, guys. And eventually land at Overland Expo West to check out the latest overlanding gear and gadgets. Here we are once again with another episode of Overlanding with Accents. Saddle up. Let's hit the trails. Howdy guys, Jason here, and today on Auto Edits, we are going on Overland Adventure 2019. This is the first time that I think one of the magazines has actually hosted this event, and it's kind of cool. I think we're going to have 38 rigs. You can see them all behind me in the parking lot. We're at the Flying E Ranch here in Wickenburg, Arizona. We're going to do a three-day adventure from here in all these amazing rigs up to Flagstaff to the Overland Expo, which I've never been to. It's kind of like SEMA the SEMA show for off-roaders and overlanders and campers and stuff. So this is gonna be just an intense, amazing trip. We're gonna see some beautiful scenery, check out some awesome rigs. We're in the truck. We brought the Ram. We're just fresh off of the trip to Mexico. So come on board, let's have some fun. That's Rick Payway. He's a famous off-roader. So we just turned right out of Flying E Ranch. We're officially on the highway heading to our first trail. Let me introduce you guys to Kyle. Kyle, who are you? Why are you here? Uh, my name is Kyle, or as Jason has been affectionately call me, Nitro. A lot of energy right here. A lot of energy. Um, I produce media for PowerStop uh, Brakes. And so I'm here to get all of the great overlanding action on film for you guys. Nice. Well, so there you go. That's Kyle. He's co-pilot. Um, we're going to have a good time. And uh, if you guys remember any of the Trail to Seamas, if you haven't watched those, go watch those. He's the director. He's the shooter. He's the editor. He's the guy. So that's why this is kind of cool. Off we go, guys. Overland. What, what, are we, what, what is our thing? Don't just stop having fun. Don't just stop overlanding. <laughs> this is about our thing. It's going great so far. We are just kind of hunkering in. We're just covering our first couple miles of dirt so far. It's been great. The crew kind of just makes you, you can't help but fall in line and feel comfortable because Nina at the front has everything yeah, under control <laughs> and everybody else is the same. It's just wonderful. Rig's running great so far. That's always a concern of mine. Make sure that my rig prep or whatever goes wrong. And we're in a line of built off-road rigs with like-minded people having a wonderful day already. It's good. That's how it's done. Yeah. All right, we have a little bit of drama already. Kind of a bummer. Just climbed a pretty fun little trail out of the riverbed. <laughs> and see that boulder right there? I was climbing that, and it's given a couple of us some problems on this little trail. And made it past it, was getting my back tie over it, and then heard a snap. And that means trail repair. One of the indicators that you're in a great group of people is that as soon as the call goes out over the rugged radios about a broken rig, the responses are fast and furious, asking which vehicle broke and who is best to help. Before I even formulated a plan of attack, trail boss Nina Barlow was inbound with a Max Trax and a great tip on how to stabilize the bottle jack in the soft sand. Looks like it's seating good. All right. There you go. Okay. 
Then, my buddy Dan showed up with some tools and techniques to get the Power Stop Ram back on the trail. So what happened here is I've gone through two axle shafts in this truck over the years that I've been driving it, and it's a weak link to having an independent front suspension vehicle. Now, what I've done is I've gone to a company called RCV Axles, and they built a bulletproof axle shaft here. Problem is, is that now you are exposing the weak links on either end of that thing, and literally the stub shaft that goes into the axle housing that is the front axle disconnect on this vehicle, sheared right off right there. So the axle is fine and this is a lesson to me and whomever with the IFS trucks which drive real nice down the highway but you're exposed to this type of thing out on the trail. Although how many axle shafts have you gone through? <laughs> no axle shafts. It's probably a loose nut behind the yeah, wheel. I was thinking. <laughs> With Dan's help, since I forgot the proper socket size for the wheel bearing nut, we made quick work of getting the CV axle removed. And then I only cried a little bit, tearing the boot apart and separating the outer RCV axle housing from the shaft. You have to do that in order to bolt the splined axle back through the unit bearing to hold it all together for the rest of the trip. Torque spec is two Uggaduggas. Two, okay, I got it. Or else you'll be singing, you picked a fine time to leave me loose wheel. I do want to quickly point out that the intermediate axle that broke was an aftermarket unit I installed during the suspension upgrade. And you better believe I've already ordered the Mopar replacement part for this thing. Damn, I've been you. there. Thank you. He has Ram. He has <laughs> yeah. Ram, IFS Ram, uh, independent front suspension Ram guys. So he helped us get this thing mobile again. It's not four wheel drive. So we are stuck in two wheel drive. Um, they're going to have us kind of do a fun little narrow trail back down into the riverbed. We're going to kind of double back and try to go out. Uh, it's going to make this a little bit more challenging, but overcame we'll, we'll trail it. repair. No we're good. We got it. Thanks again, Dan. Yeah, man, no I problem, so man. Appreciate it. No problem. Happy to help. <laughs> All right, we're hitting the trail. Okay, let's go. Actually know where we're at. I uh, don't actually care because it looks like this out here. Beautiful. Um, Nitro here is shooting some amazing drone stuff. Actually, I don't know. I have confidence that it's amazing. <laughs> but I haven't seen the screen. But, it, it, uh, it looks okay. Okay. Uh, it's gorgeous out here. It really is. I really appreciated changing up all those different biological zones. Right. So we started out in really an arid desert region. Uh, we've come up in elevation about 2,000 feet from where we started today. Right. Um, so as you can see, a lot of the biodiversity of the area has changed. I really appreciate that. I love looking at trees and plant life and flowers and all that other stuff that uh, that jives with my long hair hippie mentality. So I've, I've been digging that. It's not, it's not just an act. You are the real deal. <laughs> I'm the real deal. Yeah. Okay, so here's the here's the predicament we're in now. We're in two-wheel drive. We just had a Raptor get stuck, a four-wheel drive Raptor get stuck towing a trailer up this hill. Don't know exactly why, but it's a pretty gnarly hill. We gotta try to climb it in two-wheel drive. We got John in the Unimog climbing it ahead of us to see if, if we need a, a rope. Uh, he, he's gonna pull us out. So we're gonna just try to carry some momentum and get through this thing. So it's gonna be kind of fun. Let's do it. Okay, I'm sending it up. Send it. I'm just getting the shot of you getting over triumphantly. Yeah! Yeah! 
He's crazy with his drone right 5% here. Five percent left. Get that thing on the ground, man. All right, I'm stopping. <laughs> That's it. I'm not moving. No, wait, 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 wait. I'm not moving anymore. Come here. Land it. <laughs> Come here. I don't even see it. It's right in front oh. of us. Yeah, they're coming oh. at us like at a hundred miles an hour. <laughs> get out there. Get out there. Oh, that is crazy. Oh. Yeah. Nitro is crazy. See why I call him Nitro? So here we are. We just landed at Gold Bar and we're about to set up. Let me show you what's going on over here. The whole crew is all, we're all finding spots and trying to find the best place to overland. We're overlanding right now. So this is Nina, trail leader. Where are we right we now? We are at the fabulous Gold Bar Ranch in Walnut Grove, Arizona. Try finding that on a map. What is this place? What is the, the hook or what is the thing? So this is a big ranching area. We okay. talked about today, we talked about how this whole river valley was the gold mine strike of Arizona, 1862. Okay. Um, and of course, miners want to eat. So we got to have farmers and ranchers come in and this whole green corridor, you know, obviously you got stuff for cows to eat. Right, right. So right. this was a big ranching community. And that's how it was awesome. established and still to this day, huge ranching that's community. That's right, we saw so. the cows me yes, meandering along over there. Neighbors, okay, so yeah. yeah, it'll be kind of fun tonight to, to have the cows yeah. meandering through. But uh, very cool. Thank yeah, you so much for yeah, sharing. Thank so, you. Nice so, job today. Yeah. <laughs> well, I broke, but yeah, we made it through. But you so. still made it. On yes. The trail. It, Day two, guys. Woo! Today. What's the drill? Climbing. Climbing. Altitude. Altitude. We're going up today. Going up. Okay. That's good. That is good. That should be fun. It should, this should be a good, a good bit of dirt. Lots of scenic overlooks. Wow. Yes. All right. We'll see you there. just finished the hardest climb of the day. It was a pretty steep grade for about two miles and so there was a couple rigs that were worried about overheating and seemed to all make it up okay. So we're at the southern tip of the Santa Rita Mountains. We're at I think seven or eight thousand feet. Do you remember Kyle where we're at? Eight thousand. We're about eight thousand feet so we've got a lot of altitude today but this is the benefit of getting a lot of altitude. Views like this. <laughs> it's pretty good. So we're just grouped up and we're rolling out from the plateau, from the Vista viewpoint. Uh, it was really nice up there. And now we're just gonna make some miles in onto the next location. Everything seems to be running pretty good. This is an actually good example since we don't have four wheel drive anymore. I can't put the truck in four low. We're gonna be going down this long grade and I have the Z36, the PowerStop Z36 truck and tow kit on this thing and I'm gonna have to lean on them all the way down this hill. Even with the truck in first gear, I'm having to feather the brakes quite a bit to keep our speeds down, especially when you're in a big group like this. So, this is a good application for having a good brake kit on your rig because right now I'm leaning on them hard. You don't plan on it, but here we are. So I'm glad I got that kit. That back there is a Nitro setting up his uh, home for the night. How are you doing, Nitro? Oh, I'm doing good. Kyle. Very smelly, but good. Kyle's smelly, but good. I can attest to the smelly part, uh, riding in the 
truck right here for hours with that man and the smells that he makes. <laughs> uh, we are now here at Dogtown Campground. Is it Dogtown? It's Dogtown Lake in Kaibab National Park. What that guy says, Dogtown Lake Group Campground in Kaibab Forest or National Forest. National Forest. Another day, another driver's meeting. <laughs> All right, so we're about to roll out. It's the last morning of Overland Adventure 19. What's your thoughts on this whole uh, overlanding thing? Overlanding is a great way to see the U.S the entire world. And what we have with this group is a really good group that likes to help each other. They've been following, they've been helping, they've been doing everything they can to make this an excellent trip, and it has been. How are you feeling today, Kyle? I'm feeling great. I smell terrible. <laughs> but besides that, I feel great. <laughs> So we just stopped here at the Sycamore Overlook, and this is an amazing place. A lot of us didn't know. It's kind of like a mini Grand Canyon. All volcanic rock here, a huge glacier event happened a few zillion years ago that carved this beautiful canyon. It's beautiful. Everybody flying drones, taking pictures, doing selfies. It's so cool. The freight train is starting to move again, so now, we're heading on into Flagstaff. The forest is beautiful up here, so it's, it's been wonderful. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty nice. What's this thing right here? Dusty phase, yes! <laughs> it's a tradition, and Took it easy on them for a few, the first few days, but beautiful tradition. I waited till you were done with your lunch. Yeah, and done yeah with, so that was the nice. cameras on your leg. So that was nice of you, Dusty Face. Thank you. Getting close. We'll, Getting close. We'll see you at the expo. So we've landed here at Overland Expo West here in Flagstaff, Arizona. We covered 250 miles with our friends on Overland Adventure, had an epic time with epic people. Just an amazing trip. Now, we're surrounded by all of the latest equipment and gear to go camping and overlanding, and it's a little overwhelming, but we're gonna go check all this stuff out. Come with us. Overland Expo is touted as one of the premier overlanding events in the world. There are hundreds of vendors showing off the latest in all things camping and outdoor adventures. We even caught up with my good buddy Chris from Power Stop Breaks for some quality time while we walked the show. Hi, suits. Puppies. Lots of puppies. So there's lots of things to see here at the Overland Expo. We've been expoing like madmen. My legs hurt from expoing so hard. We expoed Pizzas. hard. Pizzas. Yeah, food. All right, so we're gonna we're, we're gonna get some again. food, food time. and check back in on. To be honest, the highlight for me wasn't any one of the products, but the fact that overlanders seem to love their dogs. And by default, because dogs are awesome, overlanders are awesome. All right, we're loading up the Power Stop Ram. That's a wrap on Overland Expo West for this year. It was an amazing event. I saw products I didn't even know I needed. If you haven't been to this thing, put it on your calendar, you should go. It's a really great event. We had a wonderful time on Overland Adventure, met great people, covered some great miles in the dirt. 
So until next time, we'll see you where the pavement ends. We're heading out of here.